Thank you, everyone, for joining. So first of all, thanks to my company, GeoSolutions. We are based in Italy with offices in the US and soon in Dubai. Um, we provide uh, support, the development, and uh, uh, solutions around a number of open source projects, and we are core developers of uh, most of them. We believe in open source, in uh, open standards, and uh, uh, we are ready to support you in any endeavor that uh, involves uh, this kind of topic. Okay, so uh, a brief introduction about OGC APIs. If you have been here for the last two or three presentations, you probably already know this, but uh, I, I saw also some people joining in late, so quick introduction. Common elements of OGC APIs. Well, first of all, if you want to just play with them, just follow that uh, QR code. It, it's gonna link you to uh, a demo server uh, that we have uh, with the bleeding edge of GeoServer providing OGC services, but also OGC APIs. And I highlighted in the homepage the links that you can follow to go to each and every OGC API that we uh, deploy there, like features, tiles, maps, and coverages. That server is a bleeding edge server. It's occasionally broken. It redeploys like three times a day, so don't rely on it. But if you just you know, want to explore and play, that's a good starting point. If you didn't manage to follow the, the QR code, I replicated it also on this slide. So, what is APIs? Fresh take on spatial data interoperability based on RESTful principles, HTTP verbs. The, the specification are not a massive 200, 300 pages long uh, document that you have to read end to end to make sense of it. They are split into a small core that can be implemented literally in a couple of days, plus a bunch of extra uh, Compatibility uh, conformance classes that can be implemented if you want or not. So, OGC API Common is the base. You can find it at that URL. It basically defines two resources uh, the landing page, which is your entry point. It's kind of the equivalent to a capabilities document to some extent, uh, in that, well, that's where you start exploring your, your API. There is the conformance declaration that contains all the conformance classes that you might uh, have implemented in your server. If your service is exposing data, not all services do, you have collections and uh, the, a way to enter into a particular collection. And uh, an, OPI, an open API definition of the service, uh, describing how to interact with it from a machine to machine communication point of view, is provided in a link with the relationship service desk. Everything is linked in OGC APIs, so uh, we have parent-child links, we have alternative representation links, we got uh, uh, description links uh, providing schemas, metadata, whatever, you can link to whatever you like. Uh, and uh, so you can follow links, and that's very nice in terms of providing at the same time an HTML representation for your resources, because people can just point and click and go around the API and without even realizing it, uh, learning about how it works and how it's built. So resources representations, OGC API Commons recommends HTML for humans, which as I say before is very good for didactical purposes and just learning your way around it. And you can actually use an OGC API just that way, or JSON for machine to machine communication. Choosing a format can be done in uh, many, many ways. The accept header, an extension at the end of a, your path, a custom query parameter, there are multiple choices. The thing is, you are not forced into f using one of them because there are links that you can just follow. Extension and conformance, as I said, the tiny core, bare minimum for a working service, like I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you with OGC API features how tiny it can get, and modular extensions for everything else and you go to the conformance declaration to find out what else has been implemented. To give you an idea, even the JSON representation is, as far as I remember, optional. You could make an OGC API that just returns XML and it's still valid. Okay, GeoServer implementations. What are the common bits of all the OGC API implementations? Uh, one service per API. Um, in GeoServer, we already have the engine to do anything that OGC APIs do, or at least the ones that we implemented. Uh, and uh, it's the engine that's sitting below the corresponding OGC service. So for OGC API features, we have the engine of, OGC, uh, of WFS that does 
well, whatever we needed, uh, fetching data, uh, filtering it, reprojecting, and so on. And so uh, the thing is, we have one common engine in the, in, uh, uh, in the middle and a protocol layer that does features or WFS, which is different, but uh, the bottom end is shared, it's the same. It also means that uh, basically all capabilities provided by the OGC, um, sorry, by the classic uh, WFS engine is also available through OGC APIs. So for example, we have the same output formats, we have the same vendor extensions, and we integrate the same basic functionality, so the same authorization and authentication, the same ability to perform flow of control, monitoring, uh, and so on. The HTML resource representations are available in every service. We don't have services that only do JSON. We took uh, uh, the path of having always an HTML representation that you can uh, use interactively. And uh, the HTML representation is driven by templates, so you can go and customize it, changing logo, styles, and even the functionality to some extent if you want. Uh, all the links, uh, or uh, not all the links, but a bunch of links in the resources are customizable so that you can add your own. So for example, for Inspire compliance, you need an extra link, you can add it. Uh, if you have uh, any um, country mandatory extension, you can just go and configure it. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at OGC API features specifically. OGC API features part one and part two, they are complete standard, so they reached 1.0, they have been voted that they are um, reliable in terms of specification. What does it do in, in terms of adding on top of OGC API common? Uh, it adds items. Items are the way to access the single features of a collection. Uh, core uh, supports only CRS84 and CRS84H, so only one coordinate reference system. Other uh, coordinate reference systems are supported through part two of the specification. Schemas are not required, unlike the, in WFS. In WFS, everything was schema-driven. In OGC API features, features can be schema-less. Also, well, our underlying engine is still schema-oriented. Uh, we have the open API definition, which is, well, what you would expect. Uh, landing page, conformance, collections, and items. Uh, in terms of items, you can do basic filtering by space and time, and it would be possible to also add an extra parameter in the query string that the server has to advertise for uh, comparison by equality. That's kind of a weak filtering in our point of view. We decided to just skip it and wait for SQL2 to be available, since we always add SQL to start with in, uh, in WFS. Paging. Paging uh, is available uh, out of the box in OGC API features. You have to follow links. The implementation of GeoServer uses the classic uh, uh, offset and limit, but that's just an implementation detail. Any OGC API features can perform these links back and forth with whatever mechanism they like, token-based or whatever it is. Site compliance. GeoServer 224 Plus builds are passing the OGC API features compliance test for both core and I'm gonna, uh, and for CRS by reference. We uh, got to this point thanks to the funding by GeoNovum. Um, so what is CRS by reference? It's the ability to support multiple coordinate reference systems. So advertising what coordinate reference system your data is actually stored in and request it in that coordinate reference system or have it reprojected into other coordinate reference system. So basically matching what we had since WFS 1.1, the ability to reproject and to filter by other, uh, by, by bounding boxes in other coordinate reference systems. Part three is filtering. Draft at 2024-0704, the date is important because they are about to go out of draft and become finalized. Um, Filtering introduces the notion of queryables, which are the properties you can use to, to filter. Normally, they are just the attributes of your data, but I can make up a queryable which is not part of my data. Let's call it any text, and I could do full, full text search, for example. Uh, and then it adds a few uh, query parameters, like filter, filter lang, and filter CRS. 
to express the filter, to indicating which language I'm writing the filter, and to indicating which coordinate reference system the geometries are expressed. Common choices are SQL2 text and SQL2 JSON. So I can write the, the filter like this and filter length SQL2 text and say, oh, my cloud cover should be between this and that and, uh, and a few other uh, parameters. Or I can write it as SQL2 JSON expressing the same thing for machine to machine communication. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, the, the JSON version is uh, current uh, regarding to the specification, but it shouldn't be that far away if it isn't. Sorting, sorting is part of uh, WFS, but it's not part of OGC API features. Uh, I linked to the, the, the ticket that is discussing it. In GeoServer, it is implemented, borrowing the syntax from OGC API records. It has been contributed by an external contributor, and well, it's useful, and uh, it provides the same functionality as WFS. Transaction, simple transactions are covered by part four, create, replace, update, and delete. These are very chatty API because you would uh, add and remove one feature at a time. So it's good for a point and click editors, uh, but it's not good for anything that requires mass changes to, uh, to your data. This is not yet implemented by GeoServer. Functional comparison with WFS, comparing WFS 2.0 with OGC API features. Uh, OGC API features basically adds schema less on top of what WFS 2 could do. And uh, it's missing a few things like a bulk changes, sort by, and so on. Um, so, yeah, uh, the functionality is more or less the same once you put together all the optional extensions that OGC API features has to offer, uh, except that some are still in draft and some are definitely missing, like bulk transactions. Stack API. Stack API is implemented in GeoServer as Stack API 1.0. Stack API is the spatial temporal asset catalog which in its API version is compatible with OGC API features. Uh, a search engine that allows to search for assets in space and time. Typical asset is your satellite imagery, but it could be anything else. Uh, the structure is more or less the same. We have the collection. The collection contains an item. An item points to a set of assets, which are basically the files making up your product. Uh, we have here some slides um, showing the um, HTML representation of the Stack API customized by the German Space Agency. So this representation with all the little tags for keywords and uh, the, the preview and so on, it's not the default representation by GeoServer. They did it by themselves. We didn't help uh, any. Um, OGC API coverages. <coughs> OGC API coverages is the equivalent of WCS. We can think of it as the simplest WCS ever. To be fair, in this case, WCS 2.0 was very, very close to the principles and implementation of an OGC API to start with. WCS 2.0 was already split into a small core and a lot of extensions, and uh, um, so it was relatively easy to migrate. Um, but yeah, OGC API coverage just allows me to enumerate raster data, describe it, download it, and so on. Uh, we can perform a coverage extraction by, by bounding box uh, or by subset, being clear about the axis order, which is one nice thing about uh, WCS 2.0. One thing that I really like about WCS 2.0 is that you don't have a bounding box and you are left wondering what's latitude and what's lo longitude in that sequence of numbers. You can say, hey, latitude between this and that, longitude between, between those two, and it, then it's clear. Um, we have an implementation of OGC API maps. Um, OGC API maps is the equivalent of WMS, of course. Uh, we have a partial implementation out of a code sprint. OGC API maps is one of those specifications that has been designed out of the box to be a building block. What's the idea of a building block? Uh, let me see if I have, no, I don't, sorry, I'm making a, I'm making a mess. <laughs> Coming back. I'll, uh, I'll show you with tiles. I have a good example uh, of uh, building block uh, with tiles. In any case, uh, the idea is that I can take any resource in my API and make maps out of it if I attach the map resources at the end of the path. Uh, uh, in the maps API, we have a notion of style, just like we had it in WMS, and we have a maps resource that we can use to 
fetch a map. The nice thing about uh, the map resource is that everything is optional, so I, I'm not forced to specify the CRS and the bounding box and the width and the height and so on and so on. Uh, I just limit myself to specify the bits that, I, that I'm interested in, so I can say the format, I can say the CRS, and let the server figure out the rest. Uh, little known information, GeoServer has added this behavior since 2006 uh, as part of the WMS reflector, which was exactly this. Uh, give me only par a part of the parameters that uh, are needed for WMS, and I'll figure out the rest. Uh, GeoServer implements an info resource, which is not part of the uh, Maps API. So get feature info classic uh, is, is not part of uh, the, the core Maps API. I, uh, I don't see it either in, um, uh, in any extension for the moment, but regardless, in GeoServer we have a, an info resource that can act as a get feature info. OGC API tiles. Tiles building block, anything can, uh, can be tiled in general, so the tiles, tiles building block allows me to attach uh, tiling resources at the end of the path. So I can tile a, a, a set of data, I can tile a set of maps, I can tile the result of a process, and so on and so on. So anything that can be split into parts can be given to an OGC API tiles. And OGC API, API tiles is literally defined as a building block, not as a standalone service even if in GeoServer it is implemented as a standalone service. Uh, one nice thing about uh, OGC API tiles, I told you that everything is linked in OGC APIs. Well, you cannot link to all the tiles. They are millions or billions. So what do you do? You have a URL template that allows you to have a method to specify a single method to build the URLs that you will need based on your tile matrix uh, structure. We have a metadata resource that uh, describes the, the tile set, and in particular in, in the GeoServer implementation, this resource has a tile JSON output, so you can go to it, take the tile JSON, give it to any tool that is uh, native to the Mapbox ecosystem, and it would work out of the box with the OGC API tiles from GeoServer, if you are using Web Mercator, of course, or if your tool is smart enough to realize that there is more than Web, web Mercator to cartography. Other APIs. We have OGC API styles, which is one that I pers personally like a lot uh, because it fills a, a gap that wasn't uh, something that wasn't available with OGC services. It describes styles as their own catalog. You can enumerate them, uh, fetch them, and uh, so think, ab think about a world when, where we have vector tiles. I fetch the vector tiles and then I, I still have to write a style or I have to uh, fetch it somewhere else, but that there is nothing linking to it. In OGC API styles, I have my catalog of styles ready to use, eventually linked to uh, layers so that, that the collection can link to the style and the style can link to the example the collection you can, uh, you can use with. So pretty nice in my opinion. We have DGGS support. I'm not going to bore you with uh, all the details. New, new way of managing coordinate reference systems. and. Uh, um, Closing words. Um, so, um, next steps. What do we need, still need to do? Well, a bunch of stuff. We would like to have OGC APIs move out of community modules. Community modules are available only in nightly builds and have the ones that have been finalized specification-wise to move to extension. Uh, for OGC API features, for example, we are waiting for SQL 2 to be finalized because we want, at the very least, to be able to fil filter data, not just by space and time. Uh, we would like to complete the outdated or partial implementations, such as tiles, coverages, and maps. Uh, add more extensions, for example, property selection and bulk transactions to features, and to implement also OGC API processes and records, since we already have WPS and CSW. Uh, hopefully, the OGC API modules and the OGC API in general will get more uptake. Right now, we have a few deployments. They are mostly research institutions or uh, institutions which are public and related to research. I hope to see more and more hybrid developments, uh, deployments, uh, sorry, providing both classic OGC services and OGC APIs at the same time to provide maximum coverage of, of clients 
um, and more front-end support. And hopefully, overall, more business around it since, well, the GeoServer development is literally very much business-driven. We, we get customers, they tell us what they want to have implemented, and we do it. And that's it.